welcome students we will continue with the revision sessions last class we had started with the revision of the second chapter that was economic planning since 1950 to 1990 so let us begin with discussing the failures of green revolution number 1 the green revolution was restricted to limited crops and limited areas it was only wheat rice which benefited out of green revolution and it was the prosperous states like punjab haryana up andhra pradesh which successfully adopted the technologies under green revolution partial removal of poverty it did not play a significant role in improving the agricultural output in all regions thus some states continued to remain poor and deprived of its benefits neglected land reforms the green revolution is said to have yielded better output or better results if land reform was sincerely implemented before bringing about technological changes income disparity between the big and the farm small farmers continued to big increase as the rich became richer and prosperous and the small farmers could not afford to buy the expensive inputs of green revolution it had a harmful impact on the environment it led to decrease in the soil fertility due to use of chemical fertilizers assured irrigation was continuously leading to depletion of the groundwater resources then we come to industries planning with respect to industries the significance of industrial development for any economy any economy cannot prosper unless and until the industries of that economy flourish the significance of industrial development can be analyzed as follows it provides large scale employment two raises the national income of the economy three promotes regional balances by distributing the benefits of development in hooks and corners of the city leads to modernization it brings about a change in the outlook the perspective and techniques of production industrial development also encourages the development of agriculture as it encourages the use of modern tools equipments new methods of cultivation etc it helps in making the economy self sufficient or sustainable by helping it to produce all its necessities by itself high potential for growth it paves the path for future development by not only encouraging agricultural sector but also gives a way to the development of tertiary services key to high volume of exports the surplus output which is generated is not only used for self consumption and meeting the domestic needs but is also traded growth of civilization any civilization can expand and grow with development of industries and other amenities being set up along with industries it changes the basic structure of the economy and leads to its historical development to the next stage sources of employment it provides large scale employment opportunities dynamism to the growth process it imparts dynamism and making the growth process more dynamic so these were the significance of development of industries in any sector now the problems associated with industrial development in india sectoral imbalances agriculture and industries fail to cooperate with each other agriculture and infrastructure fail to provide the necessary 
prerequisites to support industrial development. Regional imbalance. Industrial development was confined to limited areas, hence it was not all regions in the country which was growing industrially. Industrial sickness. There was the problem of unemployment, undercapacity utilization, leading to industrial sickness. High cost of industrial product due to unhealthy competition. The industries were not set up in a planned and organized manner. Thence, there was a competition amongst themselves preventing their growth and development. Dependence on the government. The industry is largely dependent on government support in form of taxes and duties to make imports easier. Poor performance of the public sector. There were discrepancies in running the public sector enterprises as they were basically being run for welfare and not profit. Hence, there were problems like sick units, undercapacity utilization. The performance of the public sector undertakings was not profit oriented. Underutilization of capacity, that means they were not being optimally used up to their installed capacity. The capital output ratio was also very high, which meant that the amount of capital that was being invested to produce per unit of output was quite high, making the cost of production higher and making these industrial goods expensive. Now we are going to discuss the role of public sector in industrial development. The public sector comes forward to promote industrial development and takes a major responsibility of industrializing the economy due to the following reasons. Lack of capital with the private entrepreneurs. Private entrepreneurs are deficient with the capital resources for setting up heavy large scale industries which cannot be afforded by them like atomic energy, defense, railway, etc. Lack of incentives among the private entrepreneurs due to demand being limited. There are certain goods whose demand is limited and in this case if the private entrepreneurs invest in such industries, the lack of sale would lead to closure of these industries. There are many goods which are being produced for welfare. The basic goods like your food grains etc which are being purchased by the government in large scale and being provided at cheaper rates to the BPL category if the private sector invests in setting up these industries of marketing and processing they would be at a loss. Socialist pattern. The main aim of the government was to generate welfare and not profit. Private sector cannot enter into areas where there was no returns or higher profits as they would not be able to maintain their cost of production. Development of infrastructure. Basic infrastructure is required for setting up any invest industry which was lacking. Hence, it was the government who had to take the first step forward in bringing about industrialization in the country. Development of backward areas. Underdeveloped and backward areas could be only developed by the government as the private entrepreneurs will not take up the initiative to bring about industrialization of these areas. To prevent concentration of economic power. Private entrepreneurs leads to concentration of wealth and power and assets into few hands. When the government owns these resources and manages them for public welfare, it leads to decentralization of wealth, assets and power and leads to more equitable distribution of wealth and income in the society to promote import substitution. The aim of the government was to promote those industries which would 
help in producing goods and commodities which were being imported in large scale and make the economy self-sufficient. So this was all related to the role of public sector in bringing about industrialization. In the next part, we would continue the lesson further. Please take care and stay safe. Thank you.